everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be sharing three new fall decor DIYs that are all easy and affordable to make. Most of the materials I use to create each project today are from Dollar Tree. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you do, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, I would love it if you would subscribe to see more videos just like this one. Now let's go ahead and jump right into today's DIYs. For DIY number one, I'm making a grateful pumpkin sign. And for this one, I took a square sign that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And I first started by removing the raffia bow that was on the sign. And then the words autumn blessings had a bunch of glitter on them and I didn't want that. So I'm taking my scraper tool and I'm just scraping off as much of the glitter as I possibly can. If you ever have signs that have glitter on them, using a scraper tool does work really well. Once I got as much of the glitter off as I could, I then took some sandpaper and sanded over top of both of those words just to have a smoother surface. Next, I painted my sign with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. I did have to do three different coats of paint on the front side to cover up that orange pumpkin. Then once that paint was all dry, I took my folk art chalk paint in the color Castle on a chip brush and I dry brushed this color on the entire sign on the sides and then on the front side, I made sure that I stayed painting in the same direction just back and forth. I wanted to use this wooden pumpkin that came on this stand from Dollar Tree, but I needed to remove it. So to do that, I'm taking my scraper tool and I'm wedging that in between the wooden base and then the back side of the wooden pumpkin. And I just kept doing that over and over until the pumpkin eventually popped off. You wanna be really careful when doing this, not to cut yourself with the scraper tool and you also don't wanna break the wooden pumpkin. So I just did it really slowly and carefully. Now this back pumpkin that I took off, I'm gonna use that one for a different project, but this front one that I removed is gonna be used for today's project. Now that I have my pumpkin removed, I'm painting it with my folk art paint in the color Sage, and I only did a one coat of this paint on my pumpkin. Then once that was all on, I painted the stem of the pumpkin with the Waverly chalk paint in the color Hazelnut. To add some dimension to the pumpkin, I took the Waverly paint in the color Ivory on a really small paintbrush, and I dry brushed this color around all of the outside edges of the pumpkin, and then also around the outside edges of the cutouts that are in the middle of the pumpkin. I really love the black and white buffalo check for fall. So here I'm using a piece of this ribbon that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and I'm just tying a simple bow around the very top stem of the pumpkin and just making it to the size that I want before cutting the ends of the ribbon off in a diagonal shape. For the last few steps, I need to assemble everything together. So I'm placing some hot glue on the back side of my pumpkin, then I'm placing the pumpkin on the front of my square sign that I've already painted. And then I'm also using this wooden grateful sticker letter or word that I picked up from the Target dollar spot. My camera stopped filming, but I just took the sticker part off of the back of the word and then placed it in the center of my pumpkin. Here is my grateful pumpkin tabletop sign all finished. I'm using it as a tabletop sign, but it does still have the hanger on the back of it if you wanted to hang this as well. I think it turned out really cute and it's super simple to make and really affordable as well. Now moving right on into DIY number two, I'm making a happy harvest sign. For this one, I'm using this square, thankful, grateful, and less sign from Dollar Tree, and I'm removing the jute hanger that's originally on the sign. I'm then flipping it over because I'm gonna be using the back side of this sign for the front side of my sign. And then I'm taking some wood filler and I'm just filling in those holes that had the hanger originally on the sign. Once the wood filler was all dry, I then took some sandpaper and just sanded those down so that they were nice and smooth. I actually probably didn't even need to do this step because the hanger that I make later on kind of covers up those holes, so you could opt out of doing this step completely. For this sign, I'm gonna be making stripes on the front of it. So to do that, I'm taking a piece of painter's tape and I'm placing it right down the center of my square. 
Then I'm going to be taking a smaller piece of tape and just placing it right next to that. And this is going to be my spacer piece in between my stripes or my pieces of painter's tape that I'm going to be putting down to create my stripes. I then took another piece of tape and placed it next to the spacer piece. And then I'm taking the spacer piece again and just continuing that same step until I have all of my painter's tape on the very front of my sign to make all of my stripes. Now that I have all of my tape applied, I'm then painting the two spaces between the painter's tape that are towards the outside of my square with my folk art paint in the color Spanish Moss. I'm then painting the two spaces between the painter's tape on the inside of those with my Waverly chalk paint in the color Hazelnut. And I did do two coats of paint on all of these. Then after all of my paint was dry, I then removed all of my pieces of tape. Next I'm using more painter's tape. I'm placing the tape right over top of the stripes that I just painted on. This is going to help me protect the colors that I've painted on because I'm going to be adding more colored stripes to the front of my sign. For my center stripe, I'm using that folk art paint in the color Spanish Moss once again, and I did do two coats of that paint just like I did when I used it on the other stripes. And then for the two uh, spaces between the painter's tape next to the middle green stripe, I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color Pumpkin, and again, did two coats of that paint. And then for the two outside stripes, I'm using that Waverly paint in the color Hazelnut once again. As you can probably see here, I goofed up a little bit and on the right side, I started painting it with that pumpkin color. So I just easily painted right over it with the hazelnut color. Once all of the paint was dry, I then removed all of my tape and then I really didn't like how bright these colors were. So I wanted to tone them down just a little bit. So I took my folk art paint in the color Castle on a chip brush and I very lightly dry brush this color on top of the entire front of the sign. And then I still wasn't really happy with it so I went in with my Craft Smart wood stain in the color brown and I just started applying that with an old towel and just kind of sponging it around to make this sign look really rustic and distressed. By adding the stain, it really toned those colors down and gave me the look that I was going for. If you guys like the brighter colors without the distressing, you could definitely leave it as is before I added the stain. Then because I like layering colors, if you guys have seen any of my other videos, you know I always layer paint and stain. So I'm taking that Waverly paint in the color Ivory and just dry brushing that over top of the entire front where I just applied the stain. Next, I'm painting this Happy Harvest wooden cutout that I got from Joanne Fabrics. I'm painting the leaf with the hazelnut colored paint and then I painted all of the words, the Happy Harvest words with my Waverly paint in ivory. And I did make sure to paint around all of the outside edges of the word because you will see that when it's on my sign. And because I love layering paint so much, <laughs> I used some of that ivory colored paint on top of the leaf and then after the ivory color, I added some of the Waverly paint in the color Maze on the leaf as well. Next, I'm attaching this white wire basket that I picked up from Dollar Tree. To attach it to the front of my sign, I'm using my staple gun. I'm just using the staple gun on a few of the wires along the back side, and it was really easy to use that. Then to attach my Happy Harvest words, I'm just placing some hot glue on the back of the words and then placing them on the top of my sign above my wire basket. To make the hanger for my sign, I used a few strands of this raffia from Dollar Tree and I tied a knot off on one of the ends and then measured how long I want the hanger to be before tying another knot off at the other end. I then clipped off the excess uh, strands of raffia, but I did leave a little bit extra hanging out so that it looked kind of like, like tassels, I guess you could say, on the ends. Then to attach the hanger, I placed hot glue on the front of the sign and then just placed the knots on top of the glue. After the sign was made, I ended up going back through and using my staple gun over top of those knots so that my hanger stayed on my sign a little bit better than just having the glue. 
Now I'm using some of this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm cutting it down to size so that it fits in the very bottom of my wire basket. Once I have it all cut down, I'm then adding some Spanish moss over top of the burlap ribbon and then I'm using some raffia on top of the Spanish moss. Once I have that all placed where I want it to be, I'm then adding some really small pumpkins. I believe these ones are either from Dollar Tree or they came in a pack from Walmart. And as you can see here, I'm adding some of these orange pumpkins from Dollar Tree, but I ended up removing those because I really didn't like the bright orange color and I liked the white ones better. And this is my Happy Harvest Fall sign all finished. I think this one turned out really good and it is the classic fall colors. You could switch this up and do whatever colors that you want with whatever colored pumpkins that you want and really make it fit your own decor. Now for the third and final DIY today, I'm making a pumpkin tabletop sign. For this one I'm using an 8x10 canvas from Dollar Tree and I needed to remove the canvas from the wooden frame. So I'm taking my box cutter and I'm cutting around all of the staples that are on the back side of the canvas and I'm removing the canvas from the frame. Now some of the edges were a little hard to get off so I used my scissors to cut the canvas and I didn't have to be real careful because I wasn't trying to save the canvas since I'm not going to be using it for this project. After I had my canvas all removed from the frame, I'm then taking the wooden frame and I'm placing it onto this plaid fabric that I'm going to be using. This fabric is from Walmart and it came in a fat quarter and I believe it was $1.47. I just used the frame to help me cut out the correct size of fabric that I'm going to be using. So once I had it all measured, I then cut the fabric out. Next I'm painting my wooden frame with my chalk paint in the color ivory and I only did one coat of that paint. Once this paint was all dry, I then wanted to make it look a little bit more rustic so I took my folk art paint in the color castle and dry brushed that over top of the entire frame. Now I'm attaching that fabric that I cut out to the back side of my wooden frame. To do that, I'm placing hot glue right onto the wood frame and then I'm pressing the fabric over top of the glue. I continued this same step around the entire frame until I had all of my fabric attached. Next, I'm painting this pumpkin wooden cutout that I got from Joanne Fabrics. Just like the last DIY with the wooden cutout, these are super inexpensive. For the stem of the pumpkin and the stem of the leaves, I painted those all with the hazelnut colored paint. Then for the actual leaves themselves, I painted with my pumpkin colored chalk paint, but I just dry brushed this color on top of the leaves because I wanted them to not be so dark I guess you could say and then for the actual like pumpkin cutout I painted that with the ivory colored chalk paint and for the letters of the word pumpkin I painted those with my Waverly paint in the color ink I thought this design would be really cute with some burlap fabric on the back side of my words. So here I'm just taking a scrap piece of burlap fabric and I'm cutting that down to size so that it will fit really nicely on the back side of the word pumpkin. Now it's time to place everything together. I put my burlap fabric right in the center of my frame on top of the plaid fabric and then I'm using my hot glue around all four edges of the burlap to attach it to my plaid fabric. Then for the last step, I'm using hot glue on the back side of my wooden pumpkin cutout and I'm placing that in the center of the burlap fabric. And this is my pumpkin tabletop sign all finished. This one again is the classic fall colors and I think it turned out really good. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It helps out my channel so much. And if you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing to see more videos just like this one. And I would love to know in the comments down below which project from today's video was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching.